Shielding today. Shielding, 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 shielding. How do I open this? Pizza. Did someone say pizza? It's a muted here. I try to spin my data with the shape. We'll look at 1784. Hmm. Sorry. Shall we begin? Let's close our eyes, connect onto the palate. Inhale and exhale, relax. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Koksui. To Lord Maha Guruji Meili. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, the angels and beings of the communication system with our respective Wi-Fi's and our internet connections to our soul and divine self. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your guidance, for your protection, all through the session. We especially ask you to help us have greater connectivity so we may be, may be able to have greater clarity and understanding of these priceless teachings. We ask you to help us to absorb and assimilate them and to use it to become better instruments to help others to make their lives better and to make this world a better place. We thank you in full faith, with gratitude, respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste. Welcome everybody to chapter 19. Yes, my hairdo is my son's work. He's pulled it all over the place. He wanted to cut my hair today. I'm not sure why. He wants it shorter. So through that phase and now I've come here. Kenzo. Okay, so if we can move to chapter 19, 19 shells and shields, right? So uh, just to understand, a shell is like the shell that is there on the egg, right? It's only on the periphery. There's nothing inside. So it's just a covering, it's a coating. And a shield is what you would use when you go for, to war. But you hold that thing and it shields you from the arrows that come from across, yeah? So, oh, thank you to go mm -hmm. live. Right, so chapter six, chapter 19, the shields and the shells. We're going to have a greater understanding of this. Now, if you're an, a pranic healer, if you've done pranic psychotherapy or psychic self-defense, you would have a deeper understanding of what I, that actually means. Now, what I understood when I was reading the whole chapter is I found that, you know, it's great. They talk about many things, but they don't give you the technique. They don't tell you how to do it. They just say, this is the good way to do this to protect. However, because we know the technique and we also know how it works, a deeper understanding of how that actually happens is there in this, yes? And so I think uh, that extra knowledge only make us do what we do, maybe in a more effective manner to help others and ourselves, all right? So the entire chapter is basically on etric shields. In Masachar's uh, book, he also calls it the general shield. This is one of those shields that you can wear on a regular basis. Yep. And so that's basically what we're going to be talking about. And so they say there are times, there are circumstances in which it is both permissible and desirable, yes, to form what is called the shell or a shield. Yes. Now, like I said, the shell or the shield is made out of etric matter. And then they say this is to protect yourself and others from unpleasant influences 
of different kinds. And so we are going to try and understand what are these influences we are referring to and what are some of the circumstances in which we could use this. Yes. And so they start off by saying that uh, when you are in a crowded place, when there are different types of people with different types of energies, not just ethnic energy, but emotional energy, mental energy, it means that the energy that they emit, the magnetism, could sometimes be distasteful or it could not be conducive for you if you are in that crowd. All right. Now, you might even notice this when you go uh, to something that could be very, uh, a very um, happy event like a wedding or a naming ceremony, you know, where things are supposed to be happy, a party. Or it could be where you have to because of social norms, uh, maybe not right now, but you have to attend, for example, a, a funeral right a death ceremony of someone and the emotional state could be very very different right or you have to walk into a hospital to meet a friend or a family or a relative and you can't really say no to that That's yes so, so these are the situations we're talking about where you want to look at how to protect yourself or the people around you so they're talking about the distasteful energies that might that may exist uh, if not positively injurious I'm not sure why you call it positively injurious. It should be negative. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it says that, so for a student of occultism, yes, uh, some people around you might have low vitality. For example, someone who's unhealthy or sick, right? And they will unconsciously, yes, deplete the other in the vicinity of prana. Now, the problem is when they start to do this, correct? Uh, they are what you would call the vampire like people who who absorb this energy from people around unconsciously subconsciously <laughs> i forgot about that which he keeps reminding me about no, right that's what it says unconsciously yeah so subconsciously they start to absorb the etheric matter from the person around them now if they were only trying to take remember we were talking about sometimes people are so healthy they ooze out that excess rose uh, energy out right now, if they were taking only that, it would have been fine. Problem is, they're not taking only that, right? It's not just the excess energy that's coming out of us. Even the energy that we are absorbing through our spleen and trying to circulate, they try to hasten that process and then suck everything out. That's the problem, right? So what happens is uh, these so-called vampires, if, the, if it's a very capable vampire, which means that person is intentionally doing it, they say, you can actually rid that person of all the strength and prana in a few minutes. Yes. So coming back. So when you look at this vampire, he has absorbed as a, let me read it from here, uh, not only the excess energy, but often the suction is so intense that the whole circulation of prana in the person, in the victim, uh, that is, uh, who's probably healthy, is hastened, rather made much, it's rapid, faster. And the rose color particles also being drawn out of the system before their pranic content has even been assimilated by the owner. So if it is me, right, and so as I'm absorbing the prana to keep my body healthy, before it's even processed by my system and absorbed by my system to keep it healthy and then release the excess energy, before I could even do that, the vampire has not only taken my excess energy, but also this energy that I've tried to collect within my system to keep myself healthy. And that's why what happens is when you go to a hospital, you went there to meet a patient, but when you come out, you feel drained and sometimes the next day you're, you're sick and you can't understand why. Yes, there are germs, yes, in, in certain hospitals, but say, for example, you've been to a, a nursing home or, or a place where uh, there are people who are, uh, say, uh, new mothers, yes, and so it's supposed to be a happy place, but there's, it's it's a crowded place. So you never know who else there requires your energy. Remember, energy flows from a higher level to a lower level, correct? So coming back to this, now this vampire person that we're referring to, I'm just going to go into that for a moment, is not, actually the energy that the, the vampire, I'm just going to call him he, yeah? So the vampire, when he takes all that energy, right? Uh, they call it robbed of others. So once he's absorbed all this energy and taken it to himself, sadly, he can't actually process all of it either. Because the system is not strong enough to handle all this excess energy. And so even the energy that he's taken from everyone else, it literally gets wasted out of him. Yes. And so they continue this to say that his own system tends to dissipate what he has acquired 
without prior assimilation, right? And so even his system, for, for whatever reason, cannot really assimilate it. And so a person in this condition needs mesmeric uh, treatment. So he has to be in a trance and someone has to put it in. Remember they were talking about putting it in and taking it out. Probably that's what helps because uh, they mention here the limited quantity of prana that has to be supplied to him. Yes. He can only take that much, but he's taking excessive. And so it says there, until the elasticity of his own etheric body is healed, right? So that the process of both suction, that is the energy that he's taking in, and the leakage. Now, his leakage is not happening only in one place. It's happening through the entire system, through all the pores. Through, remember what we call in pranic healing, the health rays, it's getting flushed out. And so until this is healed and it is balanced out, whatever he takes from other people is also going to be wasted on him. Yeah. And so they say the leakage of vitality takes place through every pore of the body rather than through just one portion of it. So the energy he takes, sadly, Mr. Vampire cannot really enjoy all of it because his system is not strong enough to assimilate all of it. And what happens is he's also going to leak it all out. Yeah. And it leaks through every, every part of it. Um, yeah, I'll stop here. You can, mm -hmm. continue. you can, I'll come back here because it's going mm -hmm. to go through this abnormal case. You, want you to did that back? also. You did necessary to see the... Okay, so the abnormal no, yeah, case is... <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so, uh, there are certain circumstances in which it is both permissible and desirable to form either a shell or a shield. Uh, of etheric matter to protect oneself or other people. So here they're hinting that not only can you protect yourself, you can also protect others. So you can put on a shield for yourself and you can put on a shield for people like your kids, for a loved ones. So not only self-defense, but uh, what do they call that? Protection. Um, now that's for example, now uh, protect you from what? The question is, right? I mean, you want protection. So the first thing, you go to a bodyguard and you say, I need to be protected, or you go to the police, they say, protect you from whom? Protect, protect you from what? So they say, uh, protect you from unpleasant influences of various kinds, extremely vague, <laughs> all right? But the key word is influence here. You see, they're using things interchangeably. So they're using influence. Now, when you use the word influence, my thinking goes to mental and uh, emotional, because someone influences you to do something, someone influences you to make a decision, okay? Um, but then the next paragraph, they're going into physical. So if we look at the, uh, what they call unpleasant, unpleasant influences of various kinds. What is various kinds? Um, I think everybody has worked in an office or uh, a business or someplace like that. So when you work in an office, um, there's of course something called stress, right? So um, Every time it's, you know, there's a feeling of being hurried sometimes, there's a feeling of being pressured. You might not be stressed, but the people around you are stressed, okay? Um, and you have to understand that stress is basically energy, okay? And, um, and energy can be transmitted, and this stress energy can affect you, and it probably has affected you, okay? It can affect your psychological well being, right? So, um, and it can affect your health, and it can affect your marriage also. All right. Um, I'm sure many of you notice this, that sometimes your husband, your wife, your partner is uh, stressed at work. And then uh, when they come home, just at the slightest provo provocation, they, they just explode, you know, just at the slightest provocation. Um, that is because of the stress, right? Because, uh, you know, they're under stress at work and they cannot shout at work. And that energy is transferred to them. And uh, because if they shout at work, they might lose their job. So where do you, do, where do you release it? You know? and you, because at home, because there's a contract, you're married. So, you know, in better and worse, sickness and health, <laughs> stress and no stress, <laughs> right? So, uh, so that's releasing over there, all right? So that is why it's very practical to learn how to protect yourself from these kind of things. Because according to Master Chua, most people, you know, before uh, people would work like 100 years ago, five, people, as long as you pay them, they'll work under, under any condition. And over the past 100 years, you have uh, workers' rights, you have a uh, humanitarian uh, environment of working. So now uh, the employees would want, uh, of course, air conditioning, a place to eat, 
a place to use the toilet. You know, they need certain uh, physical uh, requirements and physical hygienic circumstance. But right now, they're not looked at too much the emotional and mental circumstance, but it is going there. You, you remember in the 80s, I remember when I used to see the office design, it was basically like there were barely any windows, it's daylight, so you're not supposed to know what time of the day it is, you work all the time. But now if you see the offices, they want to go for biophilic designs, they want to go for huge windows, natural lighting, they have plants in there, they don't even have proper work desks anymore, they have sofas and any place. So, so the idea is to address the emotion. They have meditation pods in the offices, although they don't teach them how to meditate or <laughs> use those pods. Uh, they look very cozy. All cost of yeah, and so um, so that's that, you know. So um, so that is the that is the idea. So that is one influence, all right. So that is one influence. The stress radiated out. I'm sure you've noticed, right? Some of your friends, some of your coworkers, colleagues, like I, I really need to talk to you. Blah 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 blah. And then they're like, oh, I feel so much better after talking to you. But how do you feel sometimes after they're like, oh, I don't want to be that guy again or this person, you know? Every time I feel awkward. So you subconsciously tend to ignore them, okay? Um, so that is one. What is the other type of influence? This, the thing that we spoke about before, the elementals, you know? Uh, so there are elementals and of course they also influence you. So you wanna protect yourself from these two kind of things, right? So basically the vibrations of the elementals. Now the second thing, so that's influence. Now this, for example, in a mixed crowd, there is quite likely to present some physical magnetism. Wow, this now we're getting physical. Distasteful, if not positively injurious to a student of occultism. What does that mean? Contamination. <laughs> Pranic healing lingo, the whole paragraph is to avoid etheric and physical contamination, all right? Because you have to understand that you have an aura and the whole, you know, because of the prevalence of yoga, hatha yoga, whatever yoga is, people know that you have this bio energy fields around you called the aura um, and every person has that and it interpenetrates the body it's inside and extends outward and uh, the aura is not really physical it's fluidic you know it's like liquid not really liquid but it's energy right it's fluidic it flows now the aura is inside but if you see the pictures it extends outwards to up to a certain radius and as we know the bigger the aura the better why because that's the you know reserve you have, you know, bigger fuel tank or bigger processing plant or more efficient processing plant. So the bigger, the better. Now, the problem is what if you go and meet people who are, you know, supposing you see one thing that's not really spoken about here is uh, your natural protection, but we'll talk about that a little later. But uh, one thing you need to understand is that, um, how do I put it? You know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, we wouldn't meet too many people very often, right? We would meet, how many people would you meet in a day, apart from your family? 10, 15? You know, travel was limited. I'm in my farm, you're on your farm, or you're a carpenter, you're a marble worker, you're a blacksmith, you're something or the other. Um, and you'd meet at the town square maybe once a day, twice a day. You interact, barter, whatever, and you go home. Right? So you interact with what? 5, 10, 15, 20. Right? So why am we talk talking about this? You have an aura. Another person also has an aura. When you come close to that person, not really touching, but even close, all right, this aura, both are fluidic. Supposing one is red. It's not really like that, but just to make you an idea. One is red, one is blue. What happens to the two auras? They start to um, mingle. <laughs> right? Exchange. Exchange, right? So blue goes to red, red goes to blue. And you know, there is a interaction of uh, energy. But as that is why if you meet someone who's positively, you know, really powerful energy, you go next to be like, oh, I feel good. And then the other person who's you're sucking, you're like, I don't feel so good. All right. So basically that's, that's how uh, it's natural process because it's fluidic, right? Just imagine liquid, two liquids interacting. Now, um, if you, Supposing the red comes onto me and it's not really good, you know, it's not good energy. While I'm walking home, if I'm meeting like 10, 15, 20, 30, the body has a tendency to heal itself. So the body will flush out through the health rays and the aura, you know, the, uh, the outer, it'll flush, flush out these um, unwanted energies. As long as you're healthy. As long as you're healthy to a certain extent. Uh, but the problem is today, how many people do you meet? Not today, because we are under lockdown in a lot of places. 
maybe that's why we're under lockdown. The body needs a break, like, you know, right? But if you see for the past 20 years, how many people do you meet in a day, okay, on average? How many people do you interact with? Uh, say you go to an airport, right? You take a flight, 500, 1,000, and every day. So even though, and some of these people, your energy is interacting with are not very positive, <laughs> Right? Some of them are not very positive. And some of them, their energy is not very clean. So if you've been meditating for a long time, and they're maybe uh, not, not, not only not meditating, but they eat you know, certain foods that make your energy grosser, or smoke, or drink excessively, the energy is a little heavier. When you come into contact with them, there's an exchange. So they, they leave a donation for you. <laughs> All right? And sometimes, they're talking about physical, but a lot of the times, it's also emotional and mental. That's why after a certain amount of time, you start to go home and you shout. And then when you think about it, you're like, uh, I wasn't really angry. I don't know why I did that, <laughs> right? So it could not even be yours in the first place, okay? We'll come to that. It might be what we call uh, psychic emanations or radiative fields, okay? So, um, so it's it just a uh, donation from everyone else, all right? You might think it's yours, but it's not really yours, okay? So that is why we need to have um, this shielding and these shells uh, to help us especially if you're getting more and more sensitive, you're meditating a lot uh, and you're traveling maybe for a long flight, you might want to protect yourself because, you know, your vibrations are so, if you've been meditating a long time, you've been practicing higher uh, yogas, your energy is so light that when it comes into contact uh, with something grosser, it starts to affect you because the flow of prana gets affected. It's like, you know, the your energy highways, the prana or the energy is flowing at, 200 kilometers an hour and then you know and you've got super highways but someone throws in few pebbles on the road or few rocks is going to create a lot of problems on the highway okay so uh, that is why i'll move on because i'm taking too long uh, as usual uh, provided these uh, okay now the vampires sumi's explained suction and all that stuff is so intense okay i'm not gonna go into that this very uh, Pranic content has been assimilated by the owner, a capable uh, van vampire can thus drain a person of all his strength in a few minutes. Uh, it depends. I don't know whether someone, I've not seen anyone drain anyone in a few minutes. This is too, it's too visual, you know, so, uh, except if the patient is extremely depressed, you know, if, you, if you're a healer and you've been healing people who are uh, very depressed, um, you know, they, it, it's very difficult. It's like, you know, uh, you really need to be a, a very, poor, a very a more experienced healer to do healing for people with severe depression because their energy is really, really low. Uh, it's like, you know, no matter how much you give them, they just suck it out, you know? So it's like, you know, someone who has crores of debt or tens and millions of dollars of debt, no matter hundreds and thousands you give them, it's not enough. Or how many lakhs you give them, it's not enough. All right, so the, the, what else? The vampire is not um, appreciably benefited by the vitality of which he has robbed others because his own system tends to dissipate what he acquires without proper assimilation. I wonder why. I wonder why he cannot assimilate it. So he can absorb it. He can absorb it. He can absorb all of it. According to the author, he can absorb all the strength in a few minutes. So absorption is there. So that's uh, by a capable vampire, someone who knows what he's doing. A capable vampire. Which means he knows of what. Oh, so he's doing it consciously? Yeah. Oh. That's a different type. We're then they can do that, of course, if you're purposely doing that. That's not good karma, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, the vampire is not a pre appreciate, but they didn't specify what vampire now. What type of, un you presume, an incapable vampire, benefited by the vitality of which he has robbed others because his own system tends to dissipate what he acquires without proper assimilation. Even so, he can absorb, but he cannot assimilate. So maybe the spleen is okay, I don't know, but the spleen should, if the spleen was okay, then he would need to absorb uh, more prana. So, but uh, usually assimilation has to do with what we call the navel chakra and the amount of biosynthetic key in the body and also the ming min. Um, so maybe usually the lower energy centers are affected in these guys. The leakage of vitality takes place through every pore of the body. Uh, not really every pore of the body, it might look like that from, from a clairvoyance perspective, uh, it predominantly leaks from what we call an outer aura or a container of energy. Uh, okay, because the outer aura, the function, uh, we have an outer aura which, uh, which functions as a container for energy. The health rays, it's a, their, their job is to expel the energy. So <laughs> coming out from every pore of the body is normal. 
okay? So if I saw energy coming out of every pore of your body, uh, that would be okay for me because that's what's supposed to happen. If it doesn't happen, it entangles, right? And sometimes it's excess prana also, the rose color, corn color, right? It is the excess prana. So, so, you know, for me, every pore coming out of the body is not a problem. Energy leaking out of the body, that's a problem, but that's not the every pore. That's, according to what I understand, that's the health race. So just quickly, we'll just go through the presentation. Um, we not put a detailed one because then we'd be teaching a whole class called uh, Psychic Cell Defense because they're not given much here. So I don't want to give that many quotes, but you can read that book. It's a fantastic book. Even to give uh, teenagers or kids, you want to read that book, you know, uh, it's fantastic. You don't even need to know pranic healing. It's very simple, very good, very easy to understand. So number one, clairvoyantly, it's been noticed that some uh, sick people have observed to have holes in their aura through which pranic energy leaks out. So obviously, uh, these people who are vampires, why are they absorbing prana from you? Because they don't have enough. And energy falls from a high potential to a lower potential, and they want more prana. But they cannot keep the prana in. Before they can assimilate it, it leaks out. Okay? Just, uh, just that way. And number two, it says, without sealing the holes and cracks in the outer aura, the healing process is very slow. Even if the patient is energized, so even if the energy comes in, uh, the prana will just simply leak out, all right? This is one of the contributing factors of disease. Um, okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that is, I think, uh, what you have covered, right? So I think. Yeah. Right. right. Now, then they talk about this abnormal case, uh, which I'm not sure where it is connected to. It says, in, a certain abnormal, uh, in certain abnormal cases, another entity may actually attempt to seize and possess the physical bodies of others, right? Uh, I'm not sure what they're talking about seizing. The vampire is just going to take the energy. So here they just say seizing and they leave it there. They say, uh, or again... Another it, entity could be elemental. You, th you, th you think it's elemental? They sing elemental? entity. They sing entity. Not for may attempt to seize and... Uh, no, another entity. Yeah, I know. May attempt to seize and... Uh, and obsess the yeah, physical bodies the, of others. They penetrate the physical, they seize it, right? They take control of it. Okay, fine. So maybe yeah. that's like uh, you what seize, they're talking uh, about. You know, okay. So uh, the elementals, then that would make sense going into the certain day. part. Yeah? And uh, they affect, of course, uh, the way you function. Or it says it may be necessary to sleep. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, or yeah, again, example. it may be necessary to sleep. Example? So say, for example, you're in a railway carriage. I mean, that was a so common means of transport. Uh, I think what they mean is it may be necessary to use the shield while you sleep. <laughs> yeah, the reference Not to the sleep, sleep comes towards the end. We'll come to that yeah. uh, in a bit if we finish today. So uh, the, the, the point is the, the common ways in which people would actually transport, uh, you know, long distance in those days was the train. Uh, today it's the plane as well. And so here you might actually come into close proximity because you're sitting with them for so long. And if there are people who have low energy, there are a lot of vampires literally around you. And so in that long journey in, I mean, even today, it takes uh, in India at least a couple of days to reach from one part of India to, to another part, I'm talking about north south, right? And so in that process, they're gonna really sap you of your energy, right? Uh, so this is something, if you are students of occultism, it's good to experience just to understand what it feels like. Um, so that's the only thing that they men mention here. Or they say you need to go to a place where disease is rampant. And at this point, it's rampant all over the world <laughs> with the COVID-19. So it's quite interesting. Anyway, uh, so you'll notice that because of the COVID-19 situation, yes, there is disease that's spreading all over. Uh, but there's also what you call the thought forms that are created by people all over. Uh, their, their fear, their worry. Some of them think it's just nonsense. People are just making this up. There's really nothing happening. So they, they don't care how they are. They want to walk, walk around without a mask. Uh, there are others who say, listen, I have to live. So I have to go and earn a living. So the thought forms, uh, which are created globally, it's what you call an egregor. And the egregor is not necessarily positive. And that, again, influences other people, right? And so it's not just the energy with reference to etheric energy that can influence you and I, but also the thoughts and the emotions emanating from other people, which is gathering all around like clouds, uh, that as it becomes thicker and thicker, starts to influence people. And so that's why you have influences of a certain city, a certain part of the city, which when you go there, you feel different. When you move out of that, you feel different. Yes, it could be prosperity energy. It could be energy of worry and stress or violence. It, it varies, yes? So keeping that in mind, let's move on. So, uh, 
we're looking at these people and we're looking at others who are much more sensitive. Now, in this case, they are not the vampires, but they get affected by things that are around them. So they say some people are very sensitive and uh, sensitive that they are apt to reproduce in their own bodies. Yes, if there's someone else who has certain symptoms with reference to diseases, they will actually have those symptoms within them, right? So say, for example, a person is healing someone of uh, a problem with their arm and it's been severe and painful for a very, very long time, they heal, but then that same energy seems to come onto their arm and they feel it after the patient has left. So they're so sensitive that they literally absorb and reproduce it in their own body, right? And then there are others, uh, even if they're not healing people, just the, now they call it a noisy city, right? We're not talking about only noise. Uh, there's all kinds of noise today, right? So including the thoughts, the pollution that we have, that can also influence people. And that actually many of us do feel, correct? And that's what I was men mentioning earlier. There are various vibrations, as they call it, or various types of energies. And if you're really, really sensitive, you can get affected by it as well. Okay, so let me finish that, then you can go to the shields, right? Okay, go ahead, these two parallels. Yeah. By the way, here, all this time, now they're going to be talking about shields, but all this time, they've not mentioned a very important thing. Because if you just mention this, it, it starts to, you start to panic and say, oh my God, I'm going to be affected by all of this. This is true only if your aura is weak, okay? Uh, or if your aura is, uh, you know, not very strong, okay? Um... You see, the aura is a natural protection, okay? Uh, which they have coincidentally, I think, mentioned earlier, right? Sort of like that. Um, you know, there's this patient who came to Masachoa. It, it was a very rare case, not very common, uh, and exceptional case, I would say. And she was always possessed. <laughs> possessed by what? By the thoughts of other people, okay? It was very exceptional. Now, what we noticed is, um, or what Master Choa noticed uh, and told us is that uh, she was possessed because by the thoughts and she was being influenced over and over again because her energy was very weak. Energy was very weak. So the energy is weak. So the first technique in any type of self-defense or if you want to protect yourself from all these things is to make your aura strong. Okay, to make your aura strong. Because if your aura is not strong, then I don't know what type of shield you'll make in the first place. <laughs> Right. So, um, yes, shields are very good, but one of the uh, fundamental techniques is to make your aura strong. That's why people have yoga to make the aura strong. That's why it helps you, you know, believe me, that's why they have um, exercise. All these things, apart from flushing out um, dirty energy, it makes the aura stronger. So it's more difficult for people to, you know, uh, influence you to a certain extent. You know, it's like, haven't you noticed that sometimes when you're, you know, slept well, you, you know, you're confident, you're strong, uh, people don't have that much effect on you. But if you don't sleep well, you're tired, you're lethargic, then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can be influenced. Same thing, you know, so, so that's one factor. The other factor is, of course, uh, some of the chakral systems and all that, but this is not the uh, place to talk about it. Okay. So that is one. Um, then what else are they saying? Um... You see, they're talking about the uh, railway that we've already explained, Sumi's explained it, and the vampires and students may visit person or places where disease is rampant. Now, what type of disease? Is they talking about disease energy, physical disease, what they're talking about? We have no idea. Uh, but when you think of something, um, wait, what's the next paragraph? Some people are so sensitive that they are, okay, we'll talk about the that. Disease, the and the noisy city. Then... Okay, symptoms and the noisy city. Now, when you think of something, two things happen, okay? We've already spoken about the first point. Um, number one, you create a thought form, okay? Like uh, sometimes there are techniques to create thought forms. You know, they ask the priest or they ask people, okay, bless my child. Um, uh, you know, for example, if they've gone for a war, uh, I, you know, when 9-11 happened and, you know, in the United States, uh, there were a lot of Marines going there. So Massachusetts would, um, you know, people would ask for blessings and protection. And when they would pray for their children who are, you know, in the army, um, actually they would create what they call a powerful thought forms. It's almost like light with, with wings or something. And every time they protect, it, it, it gets, you know, reduced in size. Um, so basically we've spoken about thought form. So that's the first thing that comes. You create a thought form. Second, second aspect, when you think of something, is there's the energy aspect. 
what is the form aspect what is the energy aspect everything is in life is like that right you have looking at us through the laptop uh, you have the form aspect you're using the the laptop or the computer to see us but without the energy aspect without the uh, electric electrical energy without the technology um, you would not be able to see us so you need both right so two things almost always always happen so you have the radiation of energy whenever you think of something all right when you think of something you radiate besides thinking of a thought form okay so basically um if the radiation field is good then there's no problem okay there's no problem if the radiation is not so good then there's a problem okay um how does this work so it's nothing special, it's just uh, common sense. For example, you are, have an aura. So imagine you're in a house, okay? Now your house has an energy field. What is the energy field of your house? The Earth's energy field. <laughs> because you have to remember that you, your house, is inside the etheric body and emotional body and mental body of the Earth, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, so right now, say I'm in this house and uh, imagine I'm in this room, let's make it smaller, I'm in this room. And what I call the inner world and what I call the energy is basically the Earth's aura interpenetrating the space, okay? And my aura is also interpenetrating the Earth's aura, all right? Now, supposing, so my aura is independent the earth's aura and obviously the earth's aura is more subtle than mine so it will interpret my energy body now supposing i'm thinking negative or i'm creating a thought form that's not very positive if i'm thinking positive okay but if i'm thinking negative oh i hate this this look at the state of the world it's disgusting blah 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 i'm radiating energy i'm sending out signals you know just like how a tv tower sends out signals it sends out up to a certain radius all right so i'm sending out so what happens to the energy field of the Earth's aura within that space. Now, supposing in this small room, there were eight people thinking that way, what would happen to the Earth's energy field in that space? It would become predominantly pessimistic. <laughs> so if somebody like comes into that room, they are basically marinating themselves in an energy field that's not very uh, positive, okay? Now, uh, so that is the issue, that is the issue. So now if you scale it up, Let's say your workplace. Say in your workplace, you're on a certain floor. You're not stressed, but every single person around you is radiating stress energy, all right? Radiating stress energy. Uh, and what would happen to the energy field in that space, you know, the Earth's energy field, continuously, day after day, month after month, what would happen to that space, you know, predominantly? So when you come in and you start working there, you start to, you know, you're... It's like, how does Master Joe say it? Like white cloth going into a dye, right? Red. Red dye. So, you, you know, you're, you're being affected by this. Now you scale it up. Suppose you look at the city of Bangalore or Dubai or Singapore or Hong Kong or whatever city or Bombay, Mumbai. Uh, what is the population of that place? Now, what is the predominant way of the way people are thinking? Are they positive? Are they negative? Make sure both. So that would be the energy field, what we call the psychic radiatory field of that city. So you, you go to some cities, you're like, ah, oh, it's a nice place. You go to some cities, you're like, ah, oh, I want to go back. It's too aggressive. I don't know, something's weird. I can't breathe here, right? So that is the problem. And this tends to uh, uh, affect people. What they talk about symptoms, it tends to affect people who are very sensitive. Like, for example, when Master Chua went to Hong Kong, um, long back, he told us the story. He says, for some reason, when he was in Hong Kong, he started to doubt the work, pranic healing. Can you imagine the founder of pranic healing doubting pranic healing? For, you know, after, uh, for some reason, his thinking was in the, li in the line that, okay, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. <laughs> All right. So after some reflection, he realized that the thinking was due to the energy of Hong Kong at that time, which was very materialistic. So he had to uh, externalize it and isolate himself from that energy. Another time where we're talking about symptoms, right? Yeah. What did it say? Because there are a lot of examples. We'll give a proper one. Symptoms of others who are weak or diseased. Now, there was one time he was in Bavaria. Okay, he told us his story. And uh, he was asleep because it was snowing for several days. 
And there's nothing to do in, in Bavaria in those times. You're looking pre-Netflix period, basic internet. You have 10 channels and uh, out of which six or seven are in German. And then after the second day, because then the one, and one is a news channel and one is a sports channel. And after uh, two days of news, you start to watch movies in German. So you watch Mission Impossible in German <laughs> or whatever. Okay, so he, his, he, it was afternoon time. He said his body was asleep. And then when he woke up, you know, one of the things he, he uh, according to Master Cho, he's experienced a lot of uh, emotional uh, energies. He's experienced what it is to be angry. He's experienced frustration, fear, to a certain extent, a lot of things. But one thing he's never been is he said he's never been depressed. He's never experienced depression or felt depressed, right? Uh, and most people who are having a high degree of oneness, they, they, they can't be depressed because they're never alone, right? There's always, that's the whole point of being one. But the point is, when he woke up that day, he, he was depressed. He was like, ah, I'm feeling so depressed. I don't know, why am, am I depressed? Why am I depressed? I said, you know, I'm, I'm so affected by, I'm depressed. And then he realized on reflecting, so that's why it's very important. Now, can you imagine another person going through that and they have no idea that energy exists and they have no idea psychic radiatory field exists. So they will not even look at the possibility of it not being theirs. They will start to say it's their depression or they're depressed and they start to lash out or react. So according to Master Cho, he says, I reflected on it. And those who are in Arhati Yogi, you know what he did. So he, he, on a certain level, he, he reflected on it. And then he realized he is not depressed. He is sleeping in Bavaria. There's no sun for two to three days because it's snowing so heavily. And the people of Bavaria, his aura is so big. <laughs> the people of Bavaria are depressed. And he, since he was sleeping, they were all doing poo-poo in his aura or expelling in his aura at this. He was experiencing the radiatory field of the city. So he thought that depression was his, but it was never his, okay? There are a lot of stories like that, but um, the story of the Singaporean also, right? The, the Qigong master, not Qigong master, but the teachers uh, from, from the China. China. Anyway, so if from here you can see that, yes, you can experience the symptoms, but they're not yours. So sometimes the depression you experience, the anger you feel, might not even be yours. <laughs> you might have just picked it up from somewhere, from work, from people, from the street, from a bus, from anywhere. That's the problem with fluidic energies and invisible energies, right? Um, so especially supposing you are stressed and there's stress energy, like attracts like, that's what we teach the psychic center. So it, so it comes into your aura and then, you know, yeah. That's enough, no? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's enough. We can continue. Sorry. Your two paragraphs. Oh, but <laughs> but just to show you, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, Seldon's. No, and and uh, <laughs> mind you, he says, "Oh, we finished the chapter." Yeah, yeah, we've, we've. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the quotation from Practical. It's a fantastic book. If you've not read this book, it's really good. You can give this to your kids and say, "Why don't you read about how energy affects your life?" All right. Even if they've not done pranic healing, it's a good idea. Please don't give them basic pranic healing and advanced pranic healing to, to go to sleep. <laughs> All right. Okay. Shall we continue? I'll talk less. I'm, I'm done. All right. So, <laughs> so now let's just talk quickly about the shield. Uh, so the first one he's talking about, and the only one they talk about here, is the etheric shield. So. Uh, if you look at Master Cho's book, that's only one of the shields he talks about. All right. So moving on, it says in all these cases that, it, that have been expressed all this time, including all the examples. So they say the best way uh, to take advantage of uh, the shield is to wear it uh, during these times. So to protect oneself, it, it is important, however, to note that the etheric shell keeps, yes, etheric energy from outside coming into your aura and influencing you. But at the same time, they also say what happens is your own stuff, right? Which you are trying to emit and release, yes, exit out of your aura, cannot go out because of the shield. And so they say what you release could also be poisonous and this is kept within the shell. So here they're talking about a technique um, of putting an etheric shield but they also at the same time are telling you that putting the shield can actually be harmful for you because what you release which is uh, just very simply saying used up energy right cannot go out of the system it's like you being in a stuck room and urinating on the floor 
I think it's more than just urinating. But anyway, I mean, make it so, simple. It's right? Protein. So um, that is something that they don't give you a solution in this book. However, Master Chua in his book gives you a solution to take care of this, to counter this. Yes. So to move on, the shell is made up of how do you actually create it is by either the effort of the will, right? Even healing, remember, was with the intention of the will. Here is the effort of the will or your imagination. So whatever you find easier, right? Some people are easier with the will. Some people like to imagine. So whatever works for you doesn't matter. So imagination, will, or both together combined is not a problem. So he says, there are two ways in which you can create this etheric shield. So the first, he says, the etheric shield just follows the shape of your body, right? Remember, we were talking about the etheric body in this book as being about an inch away from the body, right? So basically taking the shape or the contours of your body, you create what is called a body shape, if I can call it that, body shape shield following the contours of the physical form. The second, however, he says, may be more dense, right, and maybe uh, effective as well, is the ovoid shield, right? Remember, it's not circular, it's ovoid. And this, again, is created using etheric matter. However, to create this ovoid shield would take a lot more energy because it's much, much bigger, right, uh, compared to one that is created around uh, the body. And so it requires much more. And uh, these are the two ways in which you can create shields. Now, in Master Choi's book, he calls it the body fit shield, and the other one is just called a shield, right? An etheric shield or a general shield, as I called it. So it's very, very simply put, there are these two ways of doing it. Uh, and to create it, you use the will and the imagination. Now, again, like I said, they've given you this. They say you can create it, but they don't give you the steps in which and how to create it. They say you need more. Now, how are you supposed to create more? More of what? The energy. But how do you create more energy? So they don't give you any of these steps. And that's why I was saying, um, and I mentioned that also in my notes, is that, you know, they, they talk about it. it. It sounds fantastic. It sounds like, wow, you know, now I can at last take care of myself. But as you proceed, they first tell you, first of all, it's going to bother you and it can be poisonous energe en energetically. And secondly, they say these are the ways to do it, but they don't tell you how to do it. So if I was reading this, I still wouldn't know what to do to protect myself. Yeah. So that is basically with reference to the shield. Now, then it says the student who wishes to guard their physical body, especially during sleep. Remember, Amit mentioned you could also do this during sleep. So when you talk about sleep, they say, please create only an etheric shield. Do not create a shield of the astral body. And then they give the example of this person who goes to sleep and he's enjoying himself in his dream state or in the inner world of the astral world. However, his physical body is left unprotected, which means the influences of outside could influence the physical body or the dense body. And the problem is because he's put an astral shield, which is around the astral body that actually travels uh, through the night, what happens is they say that nothing from outside in the astral world could influence the person. And uh, therefore, his, his consciousness, if it wants to even understand or grasp something, cannot get any out input from outside to help maybe comprehend or understand what he is sensing. So his experience becomes very limited in that sense. So they say, if you really want to, if you want, please only create an etheric shield before going to bed. Now this they say is helpful because as you, the incarnated soul travel through the astral well, through the astral body, you may through that waking consciousness, yes, uh, you can bring that information back and your etheric body doesn't disturb the communication between the astral into the dense body into your brain, right? Because if there are, then what happens is the, um, the astral body actually prevents the thoughts because there are many other thoughts that are around it that float in the etheric world that can then be influenced when there is input coming from the astral body or from the astral experiences. And they say, and constantly this starts to bombard uh, the vehicles from entering into the sleep etheric brain and becoming mixed up with the thoughts of the etheric brain itself. So to avoid any kind of disturbance between your astral travel experience and that coming directly into your etheric brain and into the physical brain and registering there, if you have a shield around the etheric body, Floating energies around will not influence that transmission or affect the communication, uh, which could be disturbed and uh, starts to change. Because they say this etheric brain, 
the etheric part of the brain uh, is the one that's very creative, correct? And so they say that it is a playground for creative imagination. And so what it does is when, when all this information comes, if there is no shield, it takes the input from outside, it takes the input from within itself, within the uh, cerebral vessels, and then the dreams, right? Which they make the dream more dramatic than it's supposed to be. So it distorts certain things, it adds certain things, it omits certain things, and rearranges certain things, and then it creates something more from the lower world rather than what you actually probably experience because of this jumbling up of all the communication, uh, both from the etheric world and from the astral world. Yeah. So that's where I will stop and I'll hand it over to Amit uh, since he has very short span of time now. All the best, Sam. We're talking about shield. There's so much to talk about. Okay, we'll keep it short. We'll continue next. Uh, Look, any on questions anyway. we have? Yeah, we have some questions. Okay. Um, in all these cases, an etheric shell may be utilized with advantage. Uh, okay. It's what Sumi said, basically. <laughs> okay, number one. Very important. All right. Um, you have to understand. The book's name, Massachusetts book's yeah, name is Psychic Self-Defense, yeah? Um, now, which keeps out etheric matter, but also keeps it in. It's important to note, however, and therefore one's own etheric emanations may also be poisonous and be kept within the shield. Okay, yes, that is true. But you have to understand, there are, uh, so you have to understand that they have not talked about programming the shield. You see, your shield is made of subtle matter, and this subtle matter, will follow your instructions. The question is, can energy be programmed? The answer is yes. What you are seeing here, <laughs> Zoom and your computer, everything is a manifestation of programmed energy, a manifestation of programming, okay? Um, now the question is, how do you do it? You have to read the book, Psyche Self Defense. Um, but it's very important to what we call, um, keep the energy in, okay? Keep the energy in. Uh, when you don't program the shield to be what we call internally permeable, okay, uh, what will happen is, like Sumi said, you just tell it, okay, uh, you know, stop any etheric contamination from coming in. They don't even talk about programming. So I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> right? They're just making the shield. If you make a shield without programming, I don't know what will happen. I, I'll try. We'll try some. Okay? It's like that ball. No, but I do that. Anyway, so the thing is, um, life, exactly. but it's very important to do something what we call making it internally permeable. Although that weakens the shield, uh, we, 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 we highly recommend it because then it will allow all your etheric, what they call emanations or negative etheric emanations to go out of the shield, but don't allow it to come in. So it's like a one-way um, right. mirror. <clears throat> so that's how it works. Uh, you see, one time, I think Master Chua was giving the example and there was this group of uh, white witches. I don't know if they were white witches or not, but their skin was white <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> uh, uh, that type of white witch. Uh, and I don't know the details, but it had to do something with, they wanted to uh, do something uh, to someone, send some negative things to someone to teach them a lesson. I don't know the details, but it had something to do with uh, Master Chua. It involved Master Chua. And uh, what they did was they created the shield an etheric shield uh, or a shield, and then they projected negative. They didn't realize that they're making the shield first and, you know, in case it bounces back, which we call the boomerang, and then they project negative. So they project negative. When they project the negative, it came back to them and they were bedridden for, I think, a week. That's the story I heard. Anyway, so um, now the question is, if you make this energy, there are a few issues with this. We'll talk about it. The shell is made by effort of will and imagination. Isn't that the same thing? Will doesn't necessarily need Will is intention, right? Yeah. So if people are not, when you intend to do imagine, something. their will is easier for okay. them. If you, use will, if you use will and imagination, you'll have a very pathetic shield. Maybe it's a very old technology. What you need is two things. You need uh, uh, energy source and you need will or imagination. Without the energy source, how are you going to create etheric matter from nowhere, right? So we have a certain technique called pranic breathing. So in order to create our shield, we have two things, will plus pranic breathing, okay? That's what Master Chua taught us about. Um, will and imagination, how will you make the shield very powerful? 
you, you need energy to do that. You can't just use your energy. So you need an uh, energy generating technique to make that shield, right? You know, like a power source, like, uh, you know, we have uh, in Star Trek, the energy reactic, uh, reactor, the shield reactor, you know, the, it generates power. So it shields the whole uh, spaceship, right? So you need that power source. That power source is not mentioned here. That is vital to create a shield. Um, and it says either a periphery. Here they talk about the technique, but not the power source again, uh, which follows the shape and is slightly larger and maybe densified or an ovoid. And how do you densify it? Not mentioned. An ovoid shield or etheric matter may be manufactured out of surrounding atmosphere. Here they're hinting it, right? Yeah. Out of surrounding atmosphere. But they're not very saying it outright. No. The latter, but they're saying the latter is preferable, though it demands a far greater exertion of the will and a more definite knowledge of the way in which physical matter is moved around. It does not require a highly developed technique. It just requires a highly developed teacher to explain it to you. <laughs> so it's very easy to do. Even a teenager could do it. Okay, so not that teenagers are not smart. <laughs> They're very smart, but just say. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of questions I want to ask, but I'll just stop. Um, because here, they're not even taking the, uh, the problem. Have you noticed that when you don't react to someone, you know, you keep quiet, you're calm, uh, you don't react to someone, they send you negative energy, they're shouting at you, you keep quiet, you notice they become worse. Like, ah, you are there, yeah. So, so they become worse, right? <laughs> the question is why? The question is, by not reacting, you boomerang the energy back to them because they're sending you stuff. You don't react, it doesn't go in, it goes back to them. So one of the other very, 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 very important part in shielding is to transmute the energy before sending it back. Now, if it's your husband, your wife, maybe you say, take that. But if it's your uh, boss, <laughs> then uh, you don't want him getting, or her getting more angry with you. So you want to uh, neutralize the energy they're sending and send it back. So that is also taught in the uh, course Psych Self Defense, also in the book. I don't think it makes sense to send it back to the spouse because there was a gentleman uh, who felt this energy coming. He was healing late into the evening and he says, uh, send the energy back to you know the sender, whoever sent it. When he went back home, his wife was sick and he had to take three days to heal her. Yeah. So it not a good sense. idea. But he was waiting for a long time. She kept sending him over and over again. <laughs> it's not me, huh? I'm just saying. It's, you see, the, the, the person would heal every day for a very very long time into the night uh, and then come home so i presume she was getting upset uh, she might have her reasons but uh, he had his way of trying to get it and in the end he had to pay the cost maybe we'll continue later it's already seven thirty. of course you, you will not finish. i have nothing to say about this yeah he has uh, nothing to say uh, students okay i'll just finish this. Uh, okay let's just students who wish to guard their physical bodies sleep by etheric shell must later be later i'm going to answer the question so you'll, you'll miss what is this what are they talking about unprotected Okay, let's just go to the questions. I forgot. All right. So, uh, uh, so Wani, when we're talking about people uh, and negative energies, it's not the reason why we're telling you not to meet with other people. Now, sometimes the person could be your boss. It could be someone in the house. You can't say, okay, I cannot meet you because you have negative energy. So you need to protect yourself, but we still have to keep up with social that, norms. That's why the best way is to practice loving kindness and to make your aura very, very strong. You have a 10 kilometer aura. The other person has a five inch aura. How much contamination are they going to give you? Yeah. Okay. So. Is the vampire's uh, health aura actually entangled? We are not too sure. It hasn't meant, it's not mentioned there, but there's definitely probably holes and cracks. Yeah. And maybe the health rays are also affected. That could be a possibility. We're working in the environment of stress and area uh, of not have wisdom and discernment. They're just like some facility like, okay, I'm in Asian where I'm moving in different direction. No clarity, no, is it a vampire or? I don't understand the question. The, the cause is basically they're focusing on only the uh, concrete and abstract development of the child. They're not developing the heart. Uh, all the subjects rotate. It's there in the book, Achieving One is with the Soul. Um, if you look at school, most of the subjects encompass about learning, about studying, and the other also the solar plexus developed through sports or through, uh, and the basic and the navel is developed through sports and through competition and through athletics. Uh, but uh, there are very few um, regular uh, treatments 
or regular courses that deal with developing the heart. So if you develop all these chakras, you develop people who are very intelligent and very dynamic, but not uh, very loving or very sensitive. So they might do things, not because they're bad people, but because they're just not sensitive. And they don't react. And uh, since the heart is not developed, the heart actually transmutes uh, higher energy, uh, lower energy into and neutralizes it. So if you have a very developed heart and you have some stress, the heart can also transmute that stress. But if your heart is not developed and you experience stress, that stress is just there. It becomes even worse. Um, I think the present situation with the educational system is probably not just because you're not, uh, they might be thinking clearly, but there are many influences. There's political influences, there are other influences. Um, there are institutions that feel they, they cannot just let go of certain parts of the fees. So it's not necessarily pride. Uh, it might be also trying to sustain themselves because they don't know what's going to happen. None of us know what's going to happen in the next few months. Um, so Yes, it is. It is quite disturbing for people in the educational uh, in the educational system, from teachers to people who are working in the institution, even not as teachers. What is happening? What to do? Parents. Also, kids. most of the parents will be projecting thought forms towards the teachers, and also towards and the towards school the administration. Yeah. yeah. So that's not very easy. Now, can you actually wear etheric uh, face masks? I'm not too sure. Um, I would want to try that. Yeah. especially now since we don't know what COVID is all about, right? You see, yes. based on the principle of correspondence, um, when you are shielded uh, etherically and you shield your etheric body, correspondingly, in, when you are shielded in the inner world, correspondingly, you have a certain amount of physical protection. But what we teach is not physical protection. That is in, uh, in martial arts and other things. And I don't know whether it works against disease. It works against attacks, physical attacks. Right? So now, does a big aura necessarily mean a strong aura? Usually it is. Uh, a strong aura basically means the energy is dense and thick. So for something to penetrate uh, and come through is not that easy, right? A big aura could possibly also mean okay. uh, it is uh, strong, but not necessarily uh, a strong aura okay. has to be big. It can be dense and, and compact and smaller. Not compact, but um, what do you mean by strong aura? Okay, strong aura um, has to satisfy three categories. Bigger brighter, denser. These are three, uh, three things that Master Chua would talk about when he would express what a strong aura was. It has to be bigger, it has to be brighter, and it has to be denser. So. Yep, okay. So um, I'm glad your son is enjoying the Basic Pranic Healing book. Very rare, yeah. I, I must so, say, I, I enjoyed it. Can't but, we yeah. just take it from the air without breathing? Um, the problem, the energy. Yeah. The problem is taking from the um, surrounding, right? The energy from the surrounding, you still need a source to take it and another source to release it. So absorbing and releasing it uh, to create the shield. So you still have to figure out uh, yeah, how just that like works. You get electricity from nature, but you need uh, a certain technology to, uh, you know, uh, what is the absorb? Or mm -hmm. physical or, you know, what do they say? Know, you have electricity energy. everywhere, you know, in a waterfall and everything, but you absorb it and then you transmit it and transmute it and change its form or whatever. Uh, okay, these are Well, when you want to do a meditation with a shield, um, the shield will expand according to the size of your aura, so more or less should be okay. Two hours. Oh, it's mm -hmm. So... So let's see. I need to fix it. So, all right. Um, when you have people who are working for you, um, you, you need to. It's a lesson that we all have to learn with them. Yeah. So when they get upset and when they when they have their own issues and and they kind of shout or scream, uh, that can also bother you. Uh, so we have to figure out what lesson we have to learn from them and how to work with them because you got to remember that hopefully you're, you are the more evolved one and if you are more evolved you have to have more light uh, which is wisdom and uh, more sensitivity and patience and also the power then to do the right thing sometimes you become too loving and then they take advantage of you uh, sometimes you become too strict and then they want to go away from you so you have to also find the balance it's not easy just because you you know more doesn't necessarily mean you'll always take the right decision with these people but uh, hopefully you can 
and there are uh, they are there to help you. So remember that without them, we couldn't do most of the things. But uh, Master Cho also says that sometimes it is time to let them go. And if it is time to let them go, you need to let them go and uh, find someone else who's more compatible. Because your energy, especially if you're an Arhatic and you practice regularly, influences and affects them, including their own um, weaknesses and their own strengths. Yeah. All right. That's it, people. Let's call it a day. Yeah. And uh, close your um, eyes too. Please bless them with a lot of gold and pink to harmonize the energy in the house, yeah? To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, to love Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, the angels of knowledge, wisdom, to the great teachers of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for great, great blessings. Thank you for maintaining the entire connection all through the session. Thank you for the priceless teachings, the great clarity and greater and deeper understanding. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Help us to assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments to do your work. Thank you with gratitude, respect and love. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Atma Namaste. Have a wonderful, wonderful... Uh, Dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing is basically if you are, um, you know, if you are with, um, when you're looking at, you know, house help and all those kind of things, you have to understand that there is a certain development that they have and there's nothing wrong with it, but you have to understand it. So, you know, they have their good qualities, so they might be good at what their job is, but they also might uh, expel uh, much more than you would want them to. But that's normal. I mean, they're at that level of development. And I think we have to be understanding and just clean it up. So read the Psychic Elephants book. There's incense, there's Om CD, there's a lot of stuff that auto cleaning stuff. You just clean the energy in your house because that's what happens. So you have to look at the whole picture and see uh, how it works, but it should be fine. Right? One person, if they're expelling and five people, they're not still okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you on uh, Wednesday at 6.30 and Arhatik Yogi, see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Bye-bye. I'll end for all, yeah? Bon appetit. <laughs>